some things that you'll find I cover in this video is keto flu, keto rash, keto libido, keto kitty, keto adapted, fat adapted. I talk a little bit about cycle stuff. I don't want to get into it too much because it does make ladies feel uncomfortable when a man is talking to them about their cycle, their period. But I want to give you some information on it. If you have any questions on uh, things after this video is over, please feel free to message me. I've been doing this for 15 years. Not exactly keto, but Adkins, uh, carnivore. Um, hell, I was doing carnivore without even realizing I was doing carnivore for years. Uh, it's just a being in a constant theta ketosis for almost 15 years straight with very minimal other than a two-year period where I did kind of get out of control and just feel sorry for myself after I came back from Iraq um, and just started eating whatever I wanted and then it took me about another year and a half to figure out what I wanted to do to fix it so I was almost 400 pounds you know I'm uh, I'm fortunate to have found keto and carnivore again uh, to fix my issues and I've been doing this for a long time so if anybody has questions at all feel free to message me and I'll get you the right answers so one of the things that we're going to talk about today we're going to talk about keto libido what is it <clears throat> keto libido is basically when you switch your diet to a ketogenic diet and you get to a point where your libido changes basically some people in the beginning complain about a decreased libido some people say they just they're not in the mood they're just not as um, aroused as quickly as they were before and there's some things that change in the body uh, that just makes them just not interested but then there's other people that say wait a second that's not what I'm experiencing I'm experiencing this huge rush in arousal I'm experiencing this huge rush in um, the activity that I want and my partner is telling me to back off like uh, like I like I'm just too much so there's I think the way to explain this and to not trying to get too sciencey when it comes to it is the fact that you your hormones change for women you know estrogen is released earlier their cycles change sometimes they're longer sometimes they're not as long and we need to realize that these things are perfectly normal when you switch to most diets. But the one thing that we have on our side here is the fact that we're eating more fat. And when you eat more fat, you have the potential to make more hormones and stuff, right? You have aids that can help that. So, and you more energy. So when you're having more energy, your body's dumping its own fat stores where estrogen is stored things are going to change. Hormone levels are going to be off. So, with that being said, now we can simply start to wrap our mind around weight. So we have to give it some time for our hormones to regulate? Absolutely. That is the case. In the beginning, you may experience lack of libido. But then, once everything regulates, it's kind of like a machine, you know. It's kind of like one of those deals where you, you got to try it in order to see it. And uh, that's how it was for me in the beginning. It was crazy. At first I was like, nah, this can't be, uh, this, this, this keto libido thing can't be real. Oh, it was real all right. I was the exact opposite. I had uh, issues um, trying to contain myself during the day. And that was the part that was a little uncomfortable for me. Because I didn't believe it. Until I lived it. And then once I lived it, I was like, yeah, this is legit. Like, there is such a thing as keto libido. It is real. So, understanding that your your function is going to change in the beginning, especially on a ketogenic diet, and that you have to give it time, um, it'll come back, is uh, what's the most important. And I find there's not a lot of people that like to give it enough time. So, that's keto libido in a nutshell. Let's talk about a term called Keto Kitty. What is it? Keto Kitty is where you get this pungent odor from downstairs. And you're trying to figure out what's going on. Why am I getting this odor all the time? You feel like you have to clean yourself more. It's something that I know this is not going to strike you the right way. But it's normal. Um, as, you, as you're um, continuing your journey on a ketogenic diet. 
uh, things are going to change chemically inside your body. Uh, there's going to be all kinds of different uh, nuances that you're going to experience along the way. And in this video, we're going to talk about those things. But Keto Kitty is simply just an odor. Some people use what's called an apple cider vinegar water wash. Well, they'll do like 25% apple cider vinegar or coconut vinegar with the mother and they'll add 75% water and they'll wipe under their breasts, they'll wipe their armpits with it, they'll wipe kind of downstairs a little bit being safe not to irritate anything and it will simply help get rid of some of that odor but more frequent bathing is probably going to have to be something that you'll have to do and uh, it's very normal, don't feel bad about it. What is the term fat adapted? Fat adapted is the process that your body goes through during the transition phase when you're switching from refined carbohydrates and sugars to fat. Fat is your new fuel. So wrap your mind around being used to doing a certain job for a certain amount of time and then the company asking you to switch and then learning a new job. That's basically what it is. Your body learns to start using fat as fuel and it becomes adapted to the lifestyle and the energy source of using fat. This can typically take between I would say 60 to 90 days to become fat adapted to where you actually start craving and looking to fat for energy. That's what the simple term of fat adaptation is. Let's also talk about another term called keto adapted. Keto adapted is when you've been living the lifestyle for so long that your body starts to become used to the chemical process that it goes through, the lifestyle that it lives, the types of foods and stuff that you eat, and you actually start craving and looking and learning and leaning and, and your body's, its, it's whole um, nutritional aspect starts craving being on a ketogenic diet, being keto adapted. This simply takes about one year to be really, really, really comfortable with the lifestyle in general. Another term that we often hear of is what is keto rash? and keto flu. Keto rash is where the toxins that are stored in your fat end up coming out basically. As you lose weight, those toxins are gonna be released into your body. Your body's gonna try to rid themselves of the toxins. It's gonna pour, push out through your skin. You're gonna get prickly, red, blotchy spots all over the place. Some places it can become more apparent than others. There are a number of things that can um, number of areas that can be affected by this. A lot of people experience it inside the legs, here. These are different spots of, you know, I, I'm not a person that gets acne ever, but I've been really focusing on real, real deep, strict keto lately, and my body is ridding itself. I've lost like eight pounds in the last 11 days by being strict keto and not making, you know, I'm more of a carn carnivore, actually. I have some keto things from time to time, but I, I run, same, same difference though. Um, and my basically, basically my body's ridding itself of toxins and stuff like that. But keto rash is, you know, big blotchy spots that you can kind of get it all over the place. It's almost, it almost hurts. And some people use creams. Some people use like Zyrtec and stuff like that for allergies and they find a benefit to it but the main thing is it runs its course it'll go away on its own you just got to keep hydrating stay up on your fluids and stuff like that and try to eat as clean as you possibly can while you're doing it and it will go away eventually it's just very annoying now keto flu is where you start you know uh, a ketogenic journey you've been living off glucose for so long you're starting to use fat as fuel and then all of a sudden your body starts ridding itself of all the water and stuff that's been stored because of the sugar and carbs you've been eating. Well, in this instance, as that water leaves, you're actually going to start losing a lot of uh, electrolytes with it. So being prepared ahead of time and knowing what to do in that instance and jacking up your electrolytes in the beginning and, and your water intake is going to simply, simply allow you to almost prevent the keto flu if you stay up on all that stuff you're constantly drinking electrolyte water throughout the day when you first start and just give yourself a chance you know a couple weeks to become adapted and uh not completely adapted but used to what you're doing and then you can start backing off on some of those electrolytes that's what i would suggest with keto flu but what keto flu is is it leaves you feeling like low low energy you know um 
you'll feel like you're not getting enough sleep. You'll feel like you're just lethargic and stuff during the day. Some people claim of being nauseous and things of this nature. It's because your electrolytes are dropping so fast because you don't have carbs and sugar to retain the electrolytes and stuff that you had in your system before. And now when you're flushing everything like that, you need to be replenishing it faster than you're flushing it. And that will try to prevent, if not prevent, the keto flu from actually happening. Feels just like the flu in some instances. So this is just some things to be aware of with that. Another thing that people are concerned with whenever they start a ketogenic diet is their cycles, their periods, they're way off. And people don't understand that once you start dumping your fat stores, once you start shedding that kind of stuff, estrogen is stored in those fat stores. It can make your cycle start early. It can make it last weeks. And then you think something's wrong, but really it's an adaptation phase. You know, these things can be around for, you know, three, four, five, six months before they actually regulate. And it can be uncontrollable um, to you, and you just have to let it run its course. It can be annoying. There's a number of things that can happen. But when you have different estrogen and progesterone spikes, and you're actually releasing more estrogen that's stored in your fat stores, this could change the whole cycle that you're on. So it is normal to have elongated periods, to have them happen earlier and stay heavier for longer uh, periods. So these are all normal things.